A line is one of the simplest entities that you can place into a landscape drawing. The line is placed with the line command, and the line command can be started in a number of ways. You can type L on your keyboard and hit enter. You can use an option on the toolbar, on the draw 2D toolbar, the line option there, and lines also available on the draw drop down menu. Let's draw a line using that. So I pick the line and I watch down in the command area and I see in that area and also at the intersection of my cursors that uh, the command is asking for me to indicate a first point. So I'll click, that becomes the start point and then I'll move away in whatever direction that I want to move in and I'm, in, I'm told by the little beige indicator that appears at the crosshairs that I'm going 3343 three, three, in the direction of 25 degrees up from the horizontal. So I shall click in there and then it's expecting me to draw another line to continue on, which I'll do. And then this time I'll exit from there. So I've drawn two new lines. When I select the first line that I drew, notice that there are some blue handles that appear. One handle in the middle of the line and the midpoint of the line and two handles at the end. You can use those handles to move or copy entities. A very quick way to move an entity. So that if I click on move my cursor, see how it jumps to the midpoint, I can move the line in that way. I can also lengthen the line and change the end point of the line. All of those changes that I'm making by dynamically indicating appear over here in the properties box. So if I select the line, which I have one selected now, it gives me in that properties box the length, which is close to 2,500 or 2.5 meters, its angle in the XY plane, 34 degrees, and my start and end point coordinates. So here's a line that I've drawn earlier, which has a thicker property associated with it. So I can change the property of a line by simply clicking on line weight and I'll change it to 0.4, which will give me quite a thick line. So a line is quite a simple and relatively straightforward entity. If I wanted to ensure that any lines I draw are drawn horizontally or vertically, there are a couple of ways to do that. I could put the ortho switch on, press the F2 key and put ortho on. Now when I hit L for line and enter, whenever I draw a line now, can you see that the line is either horizontal or vertical, it's constrained. If I turn that ortho off and come back in a little closer and I'll also make my line weight heavy so that you can see it more easily as I work. I can also put another switch called polar on, polar tracking. And let's draw the line choosing the line option from the toolbar. If I now move my line, the end point of the line off to the right, I can draw a horizontal line, but as I move up, you may just be able to see a dotted line extending out at 45 degrees. So I can clearly draw quite easily at 45 degrees and then back across. I can swing in this direction and again you'll see a dotted line appearing at 315. So the polar option is really, really handy. You can right click on the drawing edit area, go into drafting settings and look at polar tracking and here are the incremental angles. I could change that 45 degrees to say 30 degrees. You might want to lay uh, some tiles out, some paving out in a courtyard at 30 degrees. So now let's draw a line this time from the drop menu. I'll come over here nearer our landscape. I could draw a line now and I could move up like so and there's a line drawn at 30 to at an angle of 30 degrees. 
So there are very many options that you have when using the line command in conjunction with some of these other settings. Let's just go back to drafting settings again and look at this polar tracking. I could even enable a distance step and I could set a step at, this is for the metric system, so I could set a step size of 500 and that's on and now when I draw my line I'll use the keyboard shortcut and as I draw a line I go click click and click maybe I'll just see the indicator on the cursor is jumping in steps of 500 500 a thousand I'm two meters now across from the end point of that previous line when using the line command, and let's start it now with the keyboard shortcut, it pays to pay attention not only to the status of the switches down in the bottom of the screen in the status line, but as I draw lines, if I right click at this point, I can say, I don't want to make a series of lines. Let's, or for the moment, just leave it at series of lines. So L for line. We're back where we were first. Can you see I'm drawing a sequence of lines as I click and I'll exit. But if I draw a line, another line, right click and take that serial off, I can just draw short segments from there to there. And you can see that the command drops out and drops away. So I'll take polar off because that's slightly confusing the issue. Well, there's a final option that you might have seen when we were using the line command, so L for line. We're being asked for the first point. But if we say double tangent, and we're asked now to select the first circle and the second circle, without any real effort on our part, we've drawn a line tangential to those two circles. So do pay attention to what the right mouse, what the right mouse button is capable of doing when you are using this command. Don't forget, let's go back again, L, and uh, hit the right mouse button. Don't forget to pop it back to the usual serial option when you've finished doing that. Well, previously we determined the length of a line just by indicating a start point, moving in the direction that we wanted to go. Maybe we would have had ortho or polar on, and then we just type a number and hit enter, and the line would go in the appropriate length. There are other methods of entering the end of lines, the length of lines rather. Let me demonstrate. And I've switched to a completely different drawing. You can use coordinates, absolute coordinates if you want. Um, I could type a line from coordinate 0, 0 to coordinate 9.5, 0. So let's do that. So it's L for line. I've got my drawing colour to red, so I'm going to start at 0, 0, and I'm using the numbers on the keyboard for this. Now I'm going to put, move off in the horizontal direction, but I can, as long as it doesn't really matter what direction that I'm in, because I can just type the numbers. 9.5 in the X, so I'm going, comma, 0 in the Y, and I enter. So can you see, no matter where I had the... Um, the cursor pointing, I achieve that. That of course means that you have to know the coordinates of every point in the drawing, which is clearly unreasonable. You need to be aware that you can draw lines using absolute coordinate pairs, just as we've done there. You can also use what are referred to as relative coordinate pairs. So if I said, I'm going to draw a line and I want to start somewhere over here to the right. I'm going to just click, and now I'm, I might want to go. Uh, you use the at sign at 9.5 comma 0 and hit enter. And there we are, exit. So the line that's selected is 9.5 long, the same as it was there, but it's in using, it's, it's in prefixing. Um, the distance with the at sign that gives me relative, so it's relative to where I was last working. So that's another way of 
entering lines. There's a final way, which is termed polar coordinates, so L for line. I could say I'm going to start arbitrary somewhere in the middle of the screen, and I might wish to draw a line, I can say at 9.5, and this time I can use the angle sign, and I can say 35. That's going to draw a line 9.5 units long at an angle of 35 when I hit the enter key. And so we exit. So once again, the properties box tells it that us that the length is 9.5, but the angle is 35. So there are many, many ways to control line lengths and angles in GK Plus drawings. You just choose the one that suits you best.